Every day is a little different for me um, because I do a lot of work at home. But uh, as far as the, uh, I guess the way it generally works is I will get a call typically from a producer or production assistant um, saying, hey, are you available November the 23rd? Um, and so I'll look at my calendar and I'll say yes or no. And, you know, what's it for? Um, and in, in Nashville, there's, there's sort of a two-tiered recording system, which is a whole other topic. There's demo sessions and then there's master sessions. And then there's some sort of in-between stuff. But, but generally, that's the way it is. So um, you get all the details about the session. And um, Nashville runs like clockwork on three-hour slots, which is very different from my days recording in L.A., um, which was crazy rock and roll hours, um, very open-ended, very loose. Here in Nashville, it's, it's like trains running on time. You start one session at 10, you finish at 1, next session is 2 to 5, and then 6 to 9 is sort of the third, um, the third slot. And then that way, everybody knows um, that you can work for different people on the same day and you're not going to sort of overlap and have schedule problems. It, uh, so Nashville is sort of unique. I've never worked anywhere else that was like that, but it's a wonderful system. Uh, that way you get sort of the maximum amount of work for everyone. And, um, and when you show up for the session, basically, uh, let's say it's a master, there will be obviously a producer and an artist and the player. Sometimes it's a band and I get hired as, as an auxiliary extra player to add to the band. A lot of times, though, it's just a bunch of, of, of us session players. And, you know, d depending on it, if it's a master, we'll do maybe two or three songs in a three-hour slot, sometimes just one. Um, and they'll, what we'll do is someone will be designated as the leader whose duty it is to chart the song. And sometimes that happens beforehand. A lot of times it's just you show up at the session and they say, here's the song. Will you chart it? Okay. And so we listen to the song and I'll write it out uh, and then somebody will make copies, pass them around, we'll listen again with the charts in hand and it'll be sometimes a rough work tape and a lot of times it's a very produced demo. Demos have gotten extremely record-like uh, in the last few years because everyone has access to so much technology and, and the stakes are, are high and so everybody wants their demo to sound competitive as much like a record as possible. Anyway, we'll listen to that and we'll talk about what's good about it, what's not good or appropriate about it for this particular artist and and we'll go out and uh, you know just count it off and play through it some you know usually the producer will give us some some guidelines hey I'm thinking we want to take it a little bit more in this direction or you know maybe a few specifics but not a ton usually it's kind of uh, let's just play through it once and see what happens with a little bit of direction and then they'll guide us from the they. The producer will guide us from there after hearing kind of how we interpret the song. And uh, sometimes a very few takes will have it. Other times we labor over it and work on it for a, a while, a couple of hours. Um, and a demo session we're doing working much faster. It's sort of the same process, um, but we'll do, you know, five songs instead of two or three and obviously there's not nearly as much time for experimenting and trying stuff um, and wh whether it's a demo or a master uh, there's very very rare situations where there'll be actual printed music where someone will tell you these are the exact parts you're going to play here's the notes and read this it's almost always just a chord chart in the Nashville number system which is a music theory based thing that's a whole topic unto itself, but it, it basically gives you just the broad outlines of the chord structure of the song, and so there's a ton of interpretation, um, and your job is to basically support the vocal in the song and enhance that, not get in the way, not step on the vocal, not overplay. Um, it's not about how great of a player you are with chops and all that, it's just about finding the right appropriate stuff to make the song really come to life and, uh, and tap into the emotion of the song. Um, and that's, that's pretty much, now a lot of my work is at home, like I said, and that's a whole different thing. Um, people will, I mean, fortunately for me over the years, I've, I've earned a certain amount of trust with producers and artists 
where they will just say, hey, I'm going to send you over a bunch of songs, kind of just do your thing, and maybe on this song, maybe try a little of this or that. They'll have a few guidelines or suggestions, but a lot of the times it's just, hey, do your thing, and obviously that's wonderful um, freedom to experiment, and I don't abuse the privilege. If anyone's out there watching that hires me, I, uh, I am generous with my time. Almost all rewards. I mean, come on, we're, we get to play music for a living. What's, you know, what, what could not be great about that? Um, I mean, sure, there's, there's, there are some challenges. You know, you can burn out. I, I, some of my friends and I, we talk about that sometimes. You've got to, uh, you got to keep an eye on that because if you're doing, you know, multiple sessions every day, every day, after day, you do start to kind of lose that little spark of enthusiasm and, and you kind of find yourself repeating ideas and stuff and you just get tired. Uh, that's, that's one of the challenges because you don't want to turn down work. You know, we're all insecure musicians. We know that there's 12 younger guys right behind us that are willing to uh, jump in uh, and take our slot. So uh, you have to take, but you have to balance it. You have to take time off. I've got family. It's the ch one of the challenges for sure for me is balancing family time uh, with work. And especially since you're not just because the session's over and you go home, that doesn't mean you're done for the day. There's always overdubs to be done, or I need to develop new sounds from my, you know, arsenal of sounds. Uh, I need to work on gear issues, software, you know, things that need to get updated or, you know, there's always stuff. So you're never, you're never really done. You never really feel like um, you can just relax. Uh, I, I don't at least. Um, and that's why little, I find little romantic getaways are just the right thing. Uh, Got to have those. Um, what else? The rewards? Oh my gosh. You you get to play music with your buddies day after day. And, and I just love the music community here in this town. I mean, this is going to sound like a commercial for Nashville, but, but the, the, the players, the writers, the artists, the producers, the, they're, they're my friends and they're my family. And, uh, and so, you know, and there's a lot of them and they're all so good. And so every day you're seeing a slightly different combination of your buddies. And um, it's just the most fun thing in the world. I mean, sure, there's sessions where occasionally you'll feel like, oh, the song really bites, you know, and it, it makes it hard. The better song is, the easier it is to to play good stuff or, or contribute good ideas. Uh, there's times when, you know, somebody will have a bad attitude or, or, I mean, it's really rare, but even on, in, on those days when it's the worst possible experience you can have in a recording studio, we all know that we're very lucky and it's still better than just doing just about anything else. So it's all, it's 99% rewards. Perfection is one of those things, first of all, it's highly overrated um, and uh, it's boring. Uh, when you have something that's perfect, it, I mean, we have the capability now with the technology that we have to make perfect music. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to make something perfect in a way. And the challenge is knowing how far to go with, with, with that, whether it's using technology or just working something over and over until it gets so ironed out that it's, you know, at least close to perfect. We all strive for perfection, especially young uh, musicians. That's why we practice uh, and we try to get better and better at our craft. And so, yes, we aim for perfection, but thankfully we always fall short of that. I mean, I my favorite records are still older records back before the technology made it so easy to perfect stuff. Things were a little out of tune, a little out of time, a little sloppy. And, and going back and listening to those bad records now after hearing all the stuff that's on the radio now that is so much closer to, quote, perfect, um, it's always so refreshing and you just go, wow, 
that just sounds great. And it's really kind of not very good at the same time, but it's so great. And what happens is the emotion of the song is always the most important thing. Um, the passion, the whatever the emotion of the song is, means so much more than how well it was executed. And in fact, like I say, perfect execution is is definitely boring. Uh, I mean, they've done scientific studies where your brain it it it, it sort of seeks out or, or recognizes little flaws and imperfections that that's the humanity part of it. So um, yes, I do have the tools, auto tune and quantizing, which is making everything perfectly on the beat. Uh, we all have those tools. We all use them. Don't let anybody tell you any different. It's just how far do you go with it? And that's, it's a battle that we all have internally. Um, but um, I don't think I'm alone in saying that, uh, the things that we respond to have have humanity. There's a little bit of flaws, a little, oh, the voice is breaking up a little bit. It's maybe not quite in tune, but oh my gosh, the emotion of it is is what makes it so powerful. And, it, and if it was perfect, it wouldn't quite have that vulnerability, that emotion. So it's a battle we all fight with every day, how far to go with that. But uh, we strive for it and like I said, Gratefully, we, we fail to achieve it.